What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna be talking about a hacked Wii versus a hacked Wii U. And which one you should get. That's a lot of games. <laughs> So obviously the Instagram plug, if you're not following me, you should, I highly suggest it because you'll see a lot of content on my stories before YouTube videos go out. So if you're not following me, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you were following me, you would have seen the whole process of me modding my friend, good friend that bought the virtual pinball and a lot of my products, his Wii, which then turned into me modding my Wii U slash also George's Wii U. And I'll give you the whole background story on it. Uh, but basically this video, I'm gonna show you guys a modded Wii, which I have right now, connected to my 120 inch projector, ultra short throw and all that. But I'm actually taking the Wii out and in its place, I'm gonna be putting the Wii U that I have. So I figured this is a good opportunity to basically compare the two and which one I personally think is better and all that. So quick background story again, George, uh, I went to go deliver his V-pin and a day before I was delivering, he shoots me a message, he goes, hey Vic, I have a bunch of these like games and consoles laying inside like my boiler room. I'm gonna throw them out. Should I throw them out or do you want them? And I was like, whoa, what do you mean you have games and consoles and all that? And he basically sent me a, like a couple of pictures. In one of the pictures was a Wii. And he's like, dude, I have a whole Wii. Like he had a whole travel backpack and a bunch of like, I have a whole bunch of Wii remotes here from like steering wheels to like zappers and all that. And I told him, I was like, dude, don't, don't throw that out, please. Please do not throw that out. I will take it if you don't want it. I was like, I could even try to sell it and you know, I'll give you the profits from it. He's like, no Vic, I don't want anything with it. Take it, take it. So sure enough, I delivered the V-pin and he goes into the boiler room and he gives me this Santa sack. It was, you know, Christmas time. So he gave me a Santa sized sack of a bunch of stuff. I was like, dude, are you sure you don't want any money for this? He's like, Vic, I had to clean out the boiler room. The wife was getting pissed because there's too much stuff in the boiler room. Take it, it is yours, it is collecting dust. And I was like, no brainer. I took it home. The next day I opened it up here in my living room. Uh, it's kind of ironic because my shirt and all that because I have my 10 month old Ava and um, you'll see in the picture that even now you can see like a bunch of her toys are here and all that. So take a look real quick at this photo. As you can see that that was inside of the Santa sized sack. There is so many things varying from like Xbox 360 controllers that you can see at the bottom were like these game show controllers to the, a whole Wii um, with extras. Again, you got the steering wheel. He had like four Wiimotes um, and they're like the the Motion Plus Wiimotes. A couple of like random PS3 devices like a PlayStation Eye, even the PlayStation Move controllers and all that. Basically out of it, out of that whole bag, the thing that really intrigued me was the Wii and he had a Wii U. So I quickly messaged him, I was like, dude, you have a Wii U in here. And he's like, yeah, Vic, like take it. I don't want anything with it. I said, it's kind of cool because you have the Wii and I've always wanted to mod a Wii because honestly the arcade one-ups and you could put modded Wiis inside your arcade cabinets, whether it's an arcade one-up or your regular arcade. And they're really great substitutes for shooter cabinets. There is quite a lot of shooting games with the Wii mode. So I said to him, I was like, hey, I'll mod it. Um, maybe I'll build you an arcade for it. He's like, Vic, I don't want it. Then I noticed it had a Wii U and I was like, dude, I have a Wii U too. And I was actually going to mod my Wii U, but I'll try modding the Wii first. And then I'll go into the Wii U because the hard drives that I use or that you could use for a Wii, you could also use for a Wii U. I was like, are you interested in like me modding your Wii U and you could take it? He was like, no Vic, I don't want it. Like you just keep it. And I was like, okay, luckily I have it. The only thing I did catch was that he gave me a Wii U but he didn't have a gamepad with it. This is my personal one out of mine that I had. And uh, what's crazy with this whole video and why I'm doing it is that, same thing like my Nintendo Switch, the Wii U has been in my drawer for like, uh, this came out like what, 2000s? I don't know. It's been in my drawer for years, untouched. It wasn't that great of a console, but once you mod it, there is a lot of potential with it. Um, so I figured right now, let me shoot you real quick. I'll talk about the Wii a couple of its advantages and disadvantages to the Wii U. And again, the end goal right now is that I'm gonna be taking the Wii out of my whole projection screen console area and swapping it with my Wii U. So real quick, I'm just, I'm inside this modded Wii, or you could say a hacked Wii. Uh, it shouldn't really be called a hacked Wii because I didn't really modify anything besides the firmware, but it's a hacked Wii. 
Um, inside the hack weed is a program called USB loader. Basically, there's a couple of steps. There's a lot of YouTube videos that you could, you know, find to hack a Wii. It's pretty simple to hack. It's not that big of a deal. You can even go into craziness as far as adding RetroArch and Super Nintendo and NES, all the retro stuff. But on my specific hack, even when it comes to the Wii U, I didn't really do any like retro stuff. I only focused on Wii games and the GameCube. When it goes to the Wii U, I added the Wii U games to it. So. There's a couple ways you can do it. The only very tedious task, and again, I have my Hyperspin PC here, 42 terabyte drives and all that. I luckily had the ROM files, but the only biggest headache when it came to modding this Wii, and again with the Wii U, was the file folder structure on what and how this USB loader program works. It was such a daunting task. I had to run two Windows PC uh, programs that will basically take the Wii disc we'll talk about. It'll take the Wii disc, it'll put it in the game folder, and it, in the game folder it needs a specific like six digit code. And then in there it had to rename the ISO file to game. I'm telling you it was a process, but the end result is very satisfying. It's just, it was a tedious process. The GameCube games was another tedious process. It was god awful because I had my stuff zipped. I had to unzip. Then I had to run this program and I thought I could do a batch run of this program where it took my game file and made the folder. Basically I had to go into like a whole command line setup and it was a little bit brutal. I'll be honest, you're looking at a week alone on just creating this like file folder structure. I had the files. So if you're looking at doing something like this, I know for a fact downloading ISO, Wii and GameCube files alone it is a tedious task not to mention you know rom sites aren't really there anymore there is one rom site where i got a couple of games that didn't work on my end and like a game that was like three gigs it took like two hours to download so luckily i figured out how to get all my games to work and all that um but just keep that in mind yes it is a little bit of a tedious task but the end result is amazing right now i'm using the d-pad to navigate i have in my total collection um, again, I'm gonna count the Wii U on it. I have three, two terabyte hard drives on this. One hard drive, two terabytes worth, holds all my Wii games from number to the letter V. In total, I have 1,200 Wii games. Out of that 1,200, one terabyte has, uh, one hard drive has number to letter, and then my second hard drive has all my GameCube games, which is 600 games, and W to Z on the Wii. So again, I have 1,200 Wii games, 600 GameCube games, and then when you go into the Wii U, I have all 120 disc version Wii U games. The Wii U does have a lot of games like the eShop. I didn't bother with it because I do have my ultimate handheld, and honestly, all the eShop stuff went to the switch so i didn't waste my time downloading it i believe there's about 600 games in total on the wii u i only focused on the main cd games that you know is real i would say eShop games are kind of like you know your app phone games some of them are fun some of them are kind of boring so i didn't bother with it so again 1200 wii games 600 gamecube games and 120 wii u games like that alone is insane the only big thing now, and I, I posted it on the community and Facebook and all that, somebody did mention to me I did not need to use um, only two terabyte hard drives. Basically, the Wii and the Wii U need to be read under FAT32 format. You have to take the hard drive and format it to FAT32. From my research and my understanding and even the program that I ran to put the Wii folder structure, said that I could only do two terabyte for FAT32. Nothing over two terabyte would work. Now, backstory, I went to Micro Center to get a four terabyte hard drive and a two terabyte hard drive because I knew the two terabyte I needed for the Wii U. I put the four terabyte in my computer and I could not get it to get uh, to, to format to FAT32. So somebody said to me, you could do it and you don't need that, I, I couldn't do it. I have three two terabyte hard drives. That's that's the deal I have. Um, so again, well, let's talk about real quick about the Wii itself because you're probably looking at marketplace. Wii's are fairly cheap. Wii modes now are a little bit difficult. This is a real Wii mode with the Motion Plus on it. Um, you know, you do have your knockoff Wii modes, but George luckily had four of them. I have literally this whole cabinet 
is folding. I mean, I even have like this game pad that goes into the nunchuck. I have the nunchucks. It's, it's insane. So if you are looking at a Wii, there's a couple of pluses and minuses. The Wii is great. As you can see, like there's a lot. And you can even see here how many gigs and all that I have left. This is the Wii drive from number to V. And I only have 0.71 gigs available. A Wii game usually is about two gigs, two to three gigs, depending on the game. But basically if I click on this arrow and I just hold down, I have the entire Wii library. Um, so, you know, when you get to the shooting games, you might want to either not have all these games. I have every game. So I have everything from shooters to Mario to everything. So when you make your drive, if you're one of the only shooters, maybe just download the shooters. But I have all the games. I'm just going to run real quick to the House of the Dead. So I'm reading the name here. I'm waiting for the T. Um, again, if you, a lot of people are looking at the Wii because of the kind of shooting to it. it it's a good shooter. It basically has a lot of shooting games to it. So if you had an arcade cabinet that you wanted to do the shooter and the zapper, it's definitely a advantage to it. Now, the Wii, there are a couple of pluses and minuses. To me, it's mostly minuses. I don't want to say it that way, but think of it as in the end of this video, the Wii U is better than the Wii. Um, so if you're going to, you know, you don't want to hear the whole thing, the Wii U is better. Get the Wii U. If you, if you haven't bought a Wii yet and you're on the marketplace, I guarantee you'll find a cheaper Wii U than the Wii. So a couple ways like my personal setup is here. Some people might also look at this 120 inch screen and be like, Vic, you can't even play like the Wii correctly because if you're going to shoot a zombie that's in the corner, I don't really play shooters, especially on this. This was really for me to play with the wife like Mario and Donkey Kong and all that. We were playing some uh, Wii Resort and that was pretty cool from the couch. So I'm too close to the sensor. As you can see, my sensor is here. But again, just keep in mind, yes, it's 120 inch. Don't flame me. I, I understand. But for so far what I'm playing, it works. Yes, I can't play House of the Dead truly if I had to aim at the corners and all that. But it's still fun. Um, so when it came to the Wii, the biggest thing that really kind of annoyed me was that the Wii actually only uses component or composite inputs. Unless you get an HDMI converter, you need the component composite. So luckily with my whole surround sound Dolby Atmos, I do have a receiver and it did have composite component inputs. So I didn't have to buy the HDMI converter. That's probably the one big kind of downside, honestly, is that you have to buy extra parts like the converter and all that. The only big advantage to the Wii was that it did have, and depending on the console you get, it does have four GameCube ports in it. So all built into the system. Other than that, that's really the only advantage to the Wii. Big disadvantage though, again, is the, the HDMI converter if you needed it. Um, other thing to note is that when you do launch, and I'll do a whole thing because I'm kind of wild on this. I'm shooting it because the baby's sleeping. Um, but basically you have to start the Wii, you have to load up a program called USB Loader, and it'll take a second for it to read the hard drive and then show you the games as you can see here. I even have tabs at the top with the Wii, the GameCube, and the WiiWare stuff. Um, so right now my drive is only the Wii. I'm going to reset and I'm going to do a quick time thing to show you how quick it loads up Wii games uh, as far as this kind of front end. It loads up pretty quick. The only big thing I did notice is that when it came to the GameCube drive and just GameCube games in general, for this front end it takes a minute or two or three. Um, compared to the Wii U, still takes some time, but not as long as the Wii. So I definitely will be doing a time thing on it. Um, that's really it. Compared to the Wii U, the Wii U will play your Wii stuff. So it will work with the Wii modes and has a sensor bar and all that. You do have the advantage though with Wii U games. It does have HDMI built into it. The only real downside honestly is that you do need a USB um to gamecube controllers if gamecube is a big deal which i have that and i'll show you everything i have because honestly i've been playing a lot more gamecube than wii there's really not many wii games that i'm enjoying so far there's like a couple of like carnival games that i tried with the wife and after two minutes it was like a hard pass so to me like the wii is just not it's it's a good good console for like if you're at the arcade and you want to play but an all-around console it's really not that great um luckily i have my drive to have all the Wii games, but yeah, that's my opinion on Wii games alone. So now again, fairly, it, it loads the games fairly quickly, especially when it comes to the Wii. It actually has like, again, this is the front end called USB loader. So I'll load up like House of the Dead. 
So when you do click into it, it gives you like a nice little presentation. You could press start. And again, with this Wii, I have to connect to my Dolby surround instead of using my actual projectors uh, sound. Um, but all the games I've tested, they all work. It reads the Wii games. It's, it's, it's great. It's cool. Again, just to show you real quick, like, you know, House of the Dead. You could play Big Buck. That's honestly the only real reason why people are getting Wiis is to play light gun games. The Wii just yelled at me. So I'll just go back a little bit. Again, I have my center bar here. I got a 120 inch screen. And yes, in this, again, like I said, I'm gonna say it a lot of times because people are gonna not watch the video. Yes, I understand that in this mode, I can't enjoy a shooting game like this. So this is a tutorial, this is great. I don't care about a tutorial. Again, just wanna show you real quick, uh, you know, one, two, three. So this is, um, this is really House of the Dead 2. This is a Model 2 game or a Naomi game. Gotta do off screen reload. And off the bat, you can just tell, like, you know, this is composite component graphics. So you're only getting like 480p out of it. But again, that's what the Wii was, and that's what it was meant for. You know, it's old school graphics, and it's cool. So like I said, imagine playing this on an arcade cabinet. So it's pretty cool that you just press the home button, you go to Wii menu. Yes. And then it's gonna bring me back to USB loader. And it's actually good because I'll do it for this part. I'll throw up the timer once the screen goes white. So now, throw up a timer. As you can see, it's reading the titles. Again, keep in mind, you're looking at 1600 Wii games, boom. I am here. There is even like a search function with the magnifying glass, but at the amount of games that I have, it, the search thing takes like a, like a second to load up. So I've just noticed that basically either going left and right on the D-pad or actually just holding down the arrows on the top, it's much easier. You kind of shake the Wii mode to see what letter you're on and you're good. Again, I could hold this down and you got 1200 Wii games on it. So that honestly is the only thing about the Wii that I could say because I'm gonna swap it out and again, I will show you guys the, um, the Wii U, which I honestly suggest over the Wii. You gotta think, you get the Wii, now you're gonna get the HDMI converter because honestly, not many people, not even TVs have like component or composite. I forgot which one was better, with the red, green and all that. Um, but this is basically when you load up your Wii. As you can see, I have nothing on it besides homebrew channel and USB loader. So I go into USB loader, I start, and again, on the Wii, I do have a hard drive here, connected to the USB slot that's in the back of it. That's also a little bit of a pro if you wanna compare the Wii. You could connect any USB to it, whereas the Wii U needs a Y adapter. Um, and as you can see, I'm able to navigate and game. So that's honestly all I could really say about the Wii. Uh, I'm gonna hold down the power, power button, and I'm going to get ready to pull this Wii out and swap it with the Wii U. So now real quick, I'll show you again, this is the actual Wii to it. Kind of sucks and I thought it was, but you can see the back of it. This is the, 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 the input, the video output, I should say, that goes into a component connector and all that. You have your power and your sensor bar. Sadly, the power is not interchangeable from the Wii to the Wii U. So I thought I could, so unfortunately I have to take my power out and reroute and all that, so that you can't change. You need, the Wii U has its own specific power supply. But just to show you real quick, again, this is a hard drive, this is one of the three. Same exact ones I use Western Digital on it. And as you can see, no need for a Y adapter on the Wii. And again, this Wii specifically, it does have the GameCube ports on it, which is again a plus. And I'll show you when I talk about the Wii U, uh, George gave me two WaveBirds. So these are wireless GameCube controllers and they worked flawlessly with the Wii. Actually, I have to put this back on because we're gonna do the time thing for the GameCube. Crap. Okay, sorry about that, I, I, I totally forgot, but I now put my GameCube hard drive in and we're gonna launch USB loader. And once the screen goes white, I'm gonna put the timer on and we're gonna see how long it takes 
to recognize and read the GameCube hard drive. It's not a hard drive thing, I think it's just a game. So we're gonna start the timer. So this is actually before the timer starts. This is all my Wii games, again, from W to Z. So it reads the Wii games very fast. If I click on the GameCube, now we're gonna start the timer. And again, I have 600 GameCube games. This hard drive has all 600 on it. As you can see, out of the two terabytes, I really only needed about one terabyte, I guess you could say. Still have 930 gigs left. Um, and I do have WiiWare games on this too. Um, so from W to Z, including WiiWare games. Again, this is the one big thing I did notice was like, when I was first modding and putting the game, I was like, why is it taking so long? I thought something was wrong with the hard drive. And like, this is what I would only see was like white. And I was like, oh crap, like this doesn't work now. And I wasted my time. But um, again, 600 GameCube games are loading. I could still move the cursor around, but like I said, I'm leaving the timer up to show you. And we're gonna compare it from the Wii to the Wii U because already I know for a fact the Wii U, I would be in game playing. I know 100%. The other big thing while this is loading up, I did notice, and I do have again, there you go. I do have again, uh, WaveBird wireless controllers. So the program this is running USB loader is really running a emulator for GameCube called Nintendo Don't. Um, you could use real GameCube controllers, which again, that guy, George, gotta bless him. He gave me like four of these, the wired ones. And then I have two WaveBirds. And um, first game I loaded up was Simpsons Road Rage. And Simpsons was classic, I loved that game. So I loaded it up and then it wouldn't read the wave bird and I had to do a couple of settings things as far as inside this USB loader. And the sad thing I noticed, and this is with the Wii, if you do have a wave bird, you cannot exit the emulator like you could if you had a wired controller. Whereas the Wii U, I'm able to exit the emulator with the wave bird. Um, so real quick, I'll just, what do I want to do? What was I going to do? Uh, I was playing The Simpsons. So again, holding down the wheel. You can even see, as you can see, the images are unloading up. So again, I think it's just the Wii. I think it's, I think it's just this program in general needs that second. As you can see, I'm still holding it down. I'm going to go to The Simpsons. Not like the Wii though. As you see, when I was doing the Wii wheel, it had the images. As you can see right now, I'm kind of not lagging. It's going through the games. It's just, there is no images. But then again, going through the wheel quick, as you see, it does, you know, you don't even see the images too, but you know, maybe give it a second, let it kind of breathe. Again, this is where you're still using the Wii on this. So now that I let it go, it's gonna load up still all these. I'm gonna launch, again, I was playing The Simpsons. Uh, again, if I use the, the magnifying thing on this, forget it you would be so ticked off that you would actually just wind up restarting the system. You'd be just, just so fed up with it. Again, GameCube, I'm just doing this to show you. Um, and we will do the same thing with the Wii U to compare it. Keep in mind though, again, 600 GameCube games. And again, for me personally, I had a GameCube growing up. Iconic system, I loved every bit of it. So I'm playing more GameCube games than the Wii games, to be honest. Okay, I literally just didn't talk and just fast forward the video. That's how long it took for me to finally get to let's just play some Simpsons Road Rage. And again, launches, as you can see, like the, the when you press start, it's not like the Wii because there really was no artwork for the GameCube when it came to this. But that's the baby. <laughs> so now again, using the WaveBird on it, I could press start. I'm able to use my wireless controller as I should. And again, GameCube with the GameCube controller, it is a thing of beauty. The only sad thing though is that I cannot exit. So it's L, R, Z, start and like B, and I'm unable to exit right now. So that was like the one downside. If you're using a wired controller, it works. But basically there's a setting that I enable, which is native controller. If it's on, it blocks out the ability to exit. The, the the emulator so what do you got to do now and it says that you shouldn't do this but the only way to exit is to turn off the system that's it 
So I'm right now gonna take this out and I'm gonna bring it down to the Wii U. All right guys, so I just put the baby down to sleep. It's a couple hours after I first shot the Wii part, but in the basement right now, I'm gonna do the Wii U, show you real quick the Konami Nintendo Switch cabinet. Almost done, just waiting on buttons for that. But I figure I already have the Wii U set up here. So I'm gonna find, finish this video with the Wii U set up here because I have to basically dissect and open up my entertainment system and put an HDMI cable and take out the component cable. So I figure, you know what, I'll finish the video here. So basically I do have the Wii U here um, and I'll bring you in closer and all that. But as you can see, I do have three two terabyte hard drive. One is for the Wii U games only. One is for the GameCube and a couple of the Wii games from W to Z. And then the Wii games from number to V. So uh, I got the Wii U loaded up before I'm gonna put it up. Uh, going back to like pros and cons, again, this does have HDMI to it. Um, definitely notice the HDMI 1080p and all that. It does even inside of a uh, USB loader it bumps up the Wii games and the GameCube games to be at least a 16 by nine stretch with 60 Hertz. When I do launch GameCube games, most of the games start and ask, hey, do you want to uh, enable progressive mode, which is 60 Hertz. So it's pretty cool. Again, I can't boast about it enough. If you're gonna compare the Wii to the Wii U, I am definitely suggesting to do the Wii U. Now, when I was doing the Wii U, I, I was testing again my Wave Birds and I bought a cheap, kind of USB to GameCube controller um, thing because there are USBs in the front. You will need this if you wanna use actual game controllers for the Wii U. I bought like some cheap Chinese knockoff thing on Amazon and unfortunately it did not work with my WaveBird. So I did get the official Mayflash one and this does work with the WaveBirds. Another cool kind of thing to this is that I could also put this to the PC. So if I ever wanted to do emulation, such as with Dolphin, um, I could always use this for the GameCube. So that was a pretty good plus. Um, right now I got the Wii loaded up. I don't have any of the drives in. I'm gonna actually turn off the system, put a drive in and then reboot. Let's start with the GameCube because we just did the timer for the GameCube with the Wii. So let's try and see how long it takes to load up a GameCube kind of USB front end that we saw. So right now I'm gonna take the GameCube one, I'll put this in, I'm gonna definitely take you closer to see this very special cable that you do need for this to work correctly, which is a Y cable. It is two USBs to the hard drive. So with the Wii U, you could basically go through this whole quick menu thing. I originally had mine linked to George's, now I've relinked it to mine. I always like to start my Wii U in the Wii U menu uh, you could start it in the Wii. I feel like it takes the same amount of time. So right now, again, as you can see, I am using the gamepad to start up. And I'll go into it because George's Wii U, he actually had a Wii U Pro controller, but I'll, I'll talk about that later on. I right now want to load up GameCube. Um, so actually, even before that, I'm going to plug in my GameCube controllers with the USB. So we're going to pop that in. Doesn't matter which way you do it. And I will be using the WaveBird because I'll show you that the WaveBird you're able to exit Nintendo. So on this, I'm gonna press the Wii. And when you do press the Wii, you do need a Wii mode handy. I have my center bar here, so I'll kind of step back a little. And I'll leave it to TV and gamepad. It's pretty cool because you could actually see the screen also on the Wii U gamepad. I always have it on like that. Again, the big thing we're gonna see is the timing how long it takes to boot USB loader with the GameCube games. Just wanna show in frame, I'm gonna use again the Wii mode. So when it's in Wii mode, you, you have to use a Wii mode. That is like the biggest thing. Uh, you can't use any other controller. You can't, I'm too close to the center bar. <laughs> Move the center bar back a little. You can't use you can't even use the gamepad for Wii. So anytime you do it, you can't use it. So again, same thing like upstairs, we're gonna start the timer when this turns to the white kind of screen. So we're gonna start it now. Same exact drive from the Wii. This one I was the Wii U. So we're gonna see how long it takes to load. Again, as you saw with the Wii, 
it did take a, a fair share amount of time. Um, again, as you can see with the Wii U, it still takes time, but it's not as long as the Wii. And I'm hoping when I look at the timestamps and the, how long it takes, I'm hoping that it doesn't prove me to look like an idiot. So, <laughs> uh, and again, same thing again, it's just awesome. Definitely the, you do need the USBs if you want to play with the GameCube controllers. If you do have Wii U Pro controllers, you do not need GameCube controllers. They do work with the Wii U Pro controller. I'm gonna tell you the story about when I went to George's house and uh, he had the Wii U Pro controllers. He didn't want to use GameCube controllers, so he, he let me keep the GameCube controllers. So we're gonna see how long that took compared to the Wii. Um, so again, as you can see, I can navigate. I'm gonna do my favorite game, obviously, which is Simpsons. I'm gonna let this kind of roll and you'll see that I'm able to get a faster roll, not really getting much slow down like we did with the Wii. Again, I'm gonna launch The Simpsons. It's just a classic game. If you never played The Simpsons, Road Rage, or even Hit and Run, those are two beautiful games. Definitely, definitely dying for a remake for that, honestly. So as you can see again, I'm shaking the Wii mode to see where I am. Sorry, I pressed the A button. And again, as you can see, I'm able to even navigate faster on this. So, um, we'll do Road Rage. And we will start. So you hear a little bit of a double because I have the audio from the Wii U on. So I'm gonna lower that. Again, sadly, you can't use this pad. You can't, there's nothing you can do about it. Basically though, this is gonna launch and it's gonna ask me if I wanna do uh, pro controllers. Uh, not pro controls, if I want to do 60 hertz, I believe. It's either this game or hit and run. I'm guessing it's hit and run that will ask that. So right now, again, WaveBird controller, wire, wireless to the USB GameCube, and I'm able to make it work. Again, with the Wii, this I do have enabled native controls. So as you can see, I can play it. But the big thing with the Wii is that I couldn't exit. So if I hold L, R, Z, start, I'm able to exit back to USB loader, as you can see there. I couldn't do that with the Wii. I was doing so much research and it kind of frustrated me because everything now is wireless. Nobody wants a wired controller. I'm gonna really actually launch um, Simpsons Hit and Run, and you're gonna see that when the game starts, it does ask you, hey, do you wanna run it in progressive 60 hertz mode? So again, it was pretty cool. Definitely a, an awesome thing to do. Again, as you can see, the GameCube right now, again, same thing with the timer that we were doing, this is the only kind of downside when it comes to the GameCube, but it looks like no matter what, whether you use the Wii or the Wii U, you will get a time delay on this. I can't really pinpoint it. I think um, when I was first modding, I had Tony Hawk. I only had one game and it was quick. I have 600 GameCube games now, so maybe that might be the reason for the slowdown. So we're gonna take our Wii mode again, and it needs to connect, and we're gonna go to hit and run. Again, I'm just too close to the center. And we're gonna let this launch. So again, reliving childhood, like the first games, the first game I played was Tony Hawk 4. Um, then I went into Simpsons Road Rage and then Simpsons Hit and Run. So it's just, this to me is childhood. I, I'm loving every bit of it. As you can see here, see, do you want to display progressive mode? I press yes. From my research, it's basically bumping up to 60 hertz. And again, with HDMI, this is uh, on the screen, if I put it there, it's, it'll say 1080p. So it's probably upscaling. You might get a couple games that have the bars at the end of it, but this is definitely way better than the Wii and the component and the composite cables, because that was brutal. I didn't want to spend money on a HDMI conversion kit. That would have been brutal. I didn't want to spend money. That was, that was it. So that's why I'm always saying that the Wii U definitely is a great way to play it and all that. Again, LR, Z, start. That will exit out of USB loader. Um, from my experience, if I'm gonna swap out the hard drives, I definitely would suggest to turn off the system completely and swap out the hard drive. You don't wanna format it and all that. So once the game load, you could actually hit the power button on the Wii U. Again, the game pad, the game pad here is technically disabled. Once it's in the Wii mode, you can't use this gamepad for anything besides the screen. So now that the system is off, I can take my hard drive, I can pop it out, 
and we will load up a Wii game. So I'm going to load up my Wii drive and then restart the system. To save time, I will just jump to the Wii menu. Now just for kicks, I'm just going to, you know, throw up. You can see how long the Wii takes to load up. But as you saw on the Wii, Wii games didn't take long, you know, for the wheel to show up. So again, it really just seems like a GameCube thing. But then again, like I said, it might be 600 games. I'll go to USB loader and we will start that. While that's launching, I'll tell you real quick. So the Wii U, um, no, I'll give you the, I'll give you the stories later on. Cause I'll talk about George's, um, kind of setup and his controllers and all that. So I'll save it. I'll just real quick throw up a random Wii game and then I'll show you guys the Wii U drive. So as you can see, we're in the Wii. I can pick any game I want. We'll do superstars and start. That's when I was like this, the Wii, the Wii games are, are simple. It'll, it'll, it'll launch it. And again, you could connect to connect a bunch of Wiimotes to the systems and all that. And as you can see, you are able to play it. Uh, with this, you could press the home button once it's done loading your main game. And you could basically exit back to USB loader, just like how the GameCube was able to exit out of Nintendo. So that's the Wii. I'm gonna cut real quick and I'm gonna pop in the Wii U drive. All right, so I got my Wii U drive in. I'll start up the system with the Wii U gamepad and I'm gonna definitely launch into the Wii U menu on this. So um, it's pretty cool, you're gonna see the screen for the Wii U drive is gonna look a little bit different because it's gonna have all the Wii U games on, I should say here. It will look different here. When I was doing the Wii and the GameCube, I only had the option for Wii. Whereas now on this, you're gonna have all the games, all 120 disc games visible on it. And uh, again, there was over like 700 games, including the eShop, but as you can see, I have, let's see real quick. Uh, so there's what, two, four, there's five, there's 15 games on each menu. I know these aren't games, we'll just count it for kick. So you got one, you got two, you got three, four, five, six, seven. Games are still loading. Eight. Eight and three. So I'll figure eight in total because the other one's in the beginning. So you have eight times 15. That's how many Wii U games I have. Again, these are all the CD-based games. Um, so it's honestly your main games. You want to do uh, Captain Toad. You want Mario Maker and all that. These are all there. You want uh, Super Mario 3D World. It's there. Some of them, though, you might need an update. And if you do, you just let it update. But as you can see... I'm able to play a Wii U game without a disc. I have the actual disc to Super Mario 3D World, but unfortunately it is scratched. So it doesn't even read in my drive. But again, this specific drive, I have all my Wii U games on it and it plays flawlessly. So I could either, um, I don't want to do that. I want to press home and we could close the software. And then just for kicks, we'll just launch another one real quick. And it's cool. The only big thing I said, you do need its own separate drive. That is what I was reading about. It does need its own separate drive. Wii U apparently formats its like hard drives in a certain way. It needs to be FAT32. As you can see here, like this game, I have to download the update. I didn't download all the updates. There is an option in the software that you could download the update already. I tried that for one game and then I got an error where the game wouldn't launch at all. So somebody said download the regular game and then just let it update within the menu here. So we'll let this update. And while it does, I'll tell you the backstory real quick as far as George's and as far as the actual mod itself. So I got this like, let's just say after New Year's, January 1st is when I saw the mod. I was gonna mod it and the old way of modding the Wii U is that you had to actually buy a game on the eShop called like Brain Age. It was like an $8 game. And uh, I basically was just getting lazy and I didn't do it. And I was about to do it and then the next day I, I got tired. The next day I loaded up uh, YouTube to read you know, the tutorial and sure enough they made a new mod for the Wii U called Tiramisu Hack that you don't need to purchase a game. And I was like, wow, fate, I didn't have to pay anything. So this is running the new Tiramisu mod. 
It's um, a browser exploit, whatever you want to call it. And you basically connect to the internet and it, it mods it. Yes, there is an SD card. Yes, you have to do stuff to the SD card. And as you can see, Captain Toe loading. So this is running the tiramisu mod to it. Again, it was a very tedious mod, I'll be brutally honest. Even when I was doing the Wii, just the process of getting the Wii and the GameCube games in the correct file format, it was it was brutal. I mean, get ready for that task, especially if you don't have the actual ROMs already. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get pissed if you don't have the ROMs already. That's gonna the downloading the ROMs is one thing, and then running this program to make the folder structure is another thing. But in all honesty, the hardest and the most brutal thing about this mod was installing the Wii U games. The process was brutal. Basically, and, and a lot of people like were commenting like, Vic, you can't just copy and paste. Like, no, unfortunately you can't. Um, the way the Wii U drive works is that I had to put the SD card in my computer and this USB helper program basically downloads the image to the SD card. I'm guessing like an eShop kind of storage file thing. Once inside the SD card, I put it in the Wii U, I have to go into the Homebrew app and download Whatbax. And then from Whatbax, I had to install the game to the hard drive. It was a, I'm telling you, it was time consuming. And I only have a 32 gigabyte SD card. So I'm talking literally, I would say it's a two day process. It was a, it was, probably a good 50 hours, not 50 hours, that's more than two days. I would say it's a good like 30 hours in total of transferring files because basically I only had 32 gigs available. I would install from the computer to the SD card. That alone took like 30 minutes. And then from the SD card to the Wii was another 30 minutes. So try to figure like, depending on the game, Batman was a huge game. I think it was like a good 22 gig game. A lot of big games, there's a lot of small games too, like Shovel Knight was only two gigs. It was, that was the most daunting task, was install, 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 install. It was a pain in the butt. That was the only big thing. When I was setting up George's um, Wii U, I had two 32 gigabyte as, uh, SD cards. So I was able to install on one while I was installing this one on the other SD card, going back and forth. It was, it was a daunting task, so just prepare yourself on that and again this is running the tiramisu mod you do have to download a couple of files put it on an sd card so you do need an sd card for this to work and just follow the videos uh pence shout out to pence uh he made a great video tutorial which i followed and as you can see i'm able to play a bunch of especially wii u games that's why i really like this too i not only have the wii and the gamecube games but i do have the wii u games at my fingertips as well going real quick now talking about george Again, I told George, I said, George, you have a Wii U, bro. Let me mod it, I'll mod it. So what was actually funny, and again, like I said, follow me on Instagram, I was playing Road Rage, and George messaged me, and he's like, dude, how do I get Road Rage? Like, I wanna play it. And I was like, you have a Wii U, I'll, I'll, I'll modify it for you. And he's like, dude, as long as I can play some Simpsons Road Rage, I'm in. So I said, listen, I'm the type where I'm not really good at getting gifts. Like, I, I'm awkward when you give me a gift. So try to think of it as you saw in that picture of that huge plethora of tech that he gave me with a Wii and a Wii U and all the controllers and all that. I basically hooked him up and I modded his Wii U and I gave it back to him on that. So again, I'm not really good at receiving gifts and I don't really take stuff for free. I don't really do that. So I was very happy in the end. I hooked him up. I bought the hard drives for him. I didn't charge him for it because again, he's a great customer and as you can see, it was kind of a fair trade um, on it. So with him, when I was modding his, I remembered, I said, oh wait, you didn't, you didn't give me a game pad. He's like, I'm gonna go check the boiler room. Sure enough, he checks the boiler room, he finds the game pad. He's like, Vic, I got a game pad. I said, dude, do you have more GameCube controllers uh, or a Wiimote? And sure enough, he sends me a picture of two brand new in the box Wiimotes with the Motion Plus sensor at the bottom and two brand new in the box Wii U Pro controllers. And I was like, dude, like, I don't know, I understand how you have this stuff and don't touch it, um, but he had it. So I got excited because as I was reading about the Nintendo stuff for the GameCube, somebody said that you don't need GameCube controllers, you could actually use the Wii U Pro controller. And I was like, okay, cool. If you look at like my setup here, right? This specific setup right now here, you technically have three controllers and you kind of have to go through three controllers to play a game 
I'm talking for the GameCube. Wii U, you have your one controller. So you do need the gamepad. So for three controllers, I got the Wii U gamepad, I have the Wii mode itself, and then I have the GameCube controller. So if I'm gonna play a GameCube game, I need all three controllers, which might be a tedious task to some people. It's kind of the same thing though when it comes to the Wii. If you did mod the Wii, you need two controllers. You need the Wii mode and you need a GameCube controller. You can't play GameCube games with a Wii mode, so you need two controllers minimum. Um, but as you can see here with this Wii U setup, I have to turn on the system with the gamepad. I have to select Wii, and then I have to select with the Wii mode the USB loader, and to, to pick a game in the wheel. Then once you're actually in the game, you use the GameCube controller to launch, to, to play, I should say. So some people might be like, whoa, I need three controllers. This is too nauseous and this is too much of a headache. I get that. It's just, you, you definitely need at least the, the gamepad and the Wii mode. When I went to George's house, I was like, George, let's just see something because you have the, the, the pro controller. Maybe you don't need the gamepad. And it's just, it was just, it's just stupid that I was able to turn on the system with the pro controller, but I got this on the screen and you, you can't do anything. I was pressing a bunch of buttons. I was trying to change stuff. I was trying to like get this on the screen and it worked. But then the Wii U Pro Controller wouldn't let me go like left and right. It was it was nauseating. I felt really bad. I said, dude, just have your Wii U Pro Controller, the, the game pad. He's like, I have it. It's not a pain in the ass. Um, so that was like the only one thing. If you do have a game pad, the, the, the Pro Controller though, you could use it for, I believe you could use it for the Wii because it did notice it as a hand on the USB loader and you could use it as a GameCube controller. All right, guys, so we'll end it with the whole little pros and cons kind of recap, because I do know that I've, I've repeated myself a lot, but um, let's, just, let's just go over it again real quick. Pros and cons. So the Wii U, the biggest pro with the Wii U is that you do get Wii U games. So they both play Wii and GameCube, and if you want to go way back with RetroArch, you could play up to, I believe, N64 on all the systems. So again, big pro to the Wii U is that you could play Wii U games compared to the Wii, where you could not play that. Another big pro for the Wii U is that it has built-in HDMI input. I might, it, it sounds kind of weird for that to be a pro, but it definitely is in this day and age with all the TVs and everything like this TV, for example, does not have composite connection. So I would have had to spend money on a converter if I wanted to stick with the Wii. So. Pro goes to the Wii U, you don't need an HDMI converter, whereas the Wii, you're gonna to need to buy an HDMI converter. A pro for the Wii though, is that it did have built-in GameCube inputs. Um, but I also heard that it depends on what, what model Wii you have. I guess some models don't have it. Um, but that was a pro that basically I didn't need to buy a USB kind of adapter to make GameCube controllers work on the Wii. The downside to it though is that Nintendo don't and a wave bird did not play good or fair on the Wii. It did work wirelessly, but when it came to exiting, like you see what I was doing here, I could not do it on the Wii. So kind of a pro for the Wii is that you don't need the special USB adapter for the hard drives. You could use the regular USB that came with the actual hard drive. You just have to put it in the specific slot on the Wii. Whereas for the Wii U, you do need, and I'll, I'll bring you in closer, you do need this double kind of two USBs, two hard drive connector to make the hard drives work correctly. You do need this. If you don't have this and you plug in a regular USB cable to the hard drive, it won't read it. Basically from research is that one USB drive is not powerful enough to make this spin. So you do need this cable. Real quick, going back to the GameCube USB kind of pro and con. Um, I just remember because if you look carefully at the Mayflash, this USB cable adds an extra six feet of cable. So as you can see, like in my specific setup with my projector, this is definitely a big advantage because I could roll out six feet from my entertainment console, plug in the GameCube controller and have another six feet for that. So mark it up as a pro for having this kind of USB to GameCube controller, not to mention also, you could put the GameCube controllers to um, a PC. Luckily, you could kind of share the sensor bars and you do need the sensor bar for the Wiimote. George had like three of these wireless ones. Um, they work well too. Um, kind of a stupid thing, which was shocking to me, but apparently the Wii U, not apparently, it is true. The Wii U has a different power connection compared to the Wii. I thought it was gonna be an easy kind of swap, 
Unfortunately, no, you have to swap out the entire power supply. So I have to open up my entertainment system and basically take out the main plug to it. Um, you might think having the Wii U gamepad is a pro and it is a pro. The only downside to this is that you do need another power plug to charge this. Um, I haven't looked online if there's a USB. There should probably be a USB charger to charge this, but count that as a little bit of a downside that you do need another power plug to power and charge your Wii U gamepad. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything else, but in all honesty, I said chalk it up to the Wii U. Um, you could see, and I'm hoping, I'm not telling the future, but I'm pretty sure you can see that it does load up the GameCube USB loader menu faster than the Wii. And I mean, again, the advantage of playing Wii U games is a big deal. Uh, HDMI, it's just an awesome mod. Not to mention, honestly, if you look on Marketplace for Wii U's, you'll probably find them for dirt cheap. I mean, in New York, I think somebody was selling one for 30 bucks. Like no joke, with the gamepad, I was like 30 bucks, like, whoa, I already have mine, it was in the drawer. I'm not really gonna get rid of this. Um, I will be doing a live stream just to see because it's here. Um, some people might, for, for me personally, because you saw my entertainment system and you saw my Hyperspin 42 terabyte PC beast that I have connected to it. Some people might say, Vic, why do you have a Wii U? Why did you mod a Wii U? You have your PC system. Yes, I do. Doesn't hurt to have both. I mean, I definitely might do a comparison. Keep in mind though, like my PC, I could run Dolphin with upscaled graphics and all that. So I'm thinking maybe one day I'll do like Wii U gameplay on Tony Hawk on the GameCube compared to the Dolphin. Um, it's actually kind of funny because uh, when it came to the Wii and I modded the Wii, my wife was like, I, I told my wife, I was like, I'll sell it. Like, I'll just, I'll mod it and then I'll sell it. And she's like, no, I'll keep it for the baby because when she gets old and we have cousins over, they could not bother you and your setup. They could have their own stuff. So I said, you know what? That's a great idea. So basically think of it as the Wii U will go to baby Ava. Um, if anybody's looking for a Wii though, that Wii that's up there, that's going, that's gone. Again, once I've experienced a Wii U, especially now with the tiramisu hack that you don't need to pay for an app, uh, it, this, this will stay, that Wii is gone, it's gonna go. I'll either donate it to somebody or give it to a streamer or something like that, or I'm thinking of putting it in an arcade cabinet. I was gonna put it in the Konami cabinet, might as well show you that real quick. You already saw it because, again, if you follow me on Instagram and even the YouTube shorts, you would have seen the Konami cabinet, it's almost done. I was gonna put the Wii to this, but the screen tilt and I'm gonna have a bar here. It, no, this is meant for the Switch, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, but if anybody's interested in a Wii, you can let me know. <laughs> but honestly, there you guys have it. It's been a long-awaited video. Um, a lot of people on Facebook groups, they've seen me post this and they're like, whoa, 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 how, how, how? So I'm just glad to finally get it done. VVP Game Case Arcades, the Wii U. Get it. Don't get the Wii. I don't suggest the Wii. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs>